Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Horse meat has contaminated the UK food chain. Pork DNA has been found in prison meals. This evening's big question, how halal is halal? I'm delighted to be joined by the president of the Halal Food Authority, Masood Khwaja. Masood Khwaja, again, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You're most welcome. Prior to the break, uh, we were talking about uh, a scenario that I painted uh, for Masood Khwaja. Masood Khwaja, in, in relation to that handling of food by non-Muslims, I just want to be absolutely clear on this. If a non-Muslim were to handle food without gloves, would you certify um, that particular chicken outlet, for example? Well, you see, as I mentioned to you, these, these, these laws are the, uh, I mean, I don't know whether you're talking about individual uh, kind of shop or a shop of, uh, of a uh, larger name. Let's company. take, for the sake of argument, an individual shop. There's a, individual shop, there's shop. a shop in Bradford. Right. It's run by non-Muslims. Right. They want the HFA right. seal of approval. Individual non-Muslims handle the food in, without in individual gloves. Shops. Would you in individual shops, them? you sometimes find that people do things which they do not understand. Why they do these things is that they, they don't take the full training of hygiene, if you like. They just think that because they have got some asset to open a shop, Yes. They can open a shop. They can do. They they really don't look at the hygiene rules and and the rules of contamination sure. and things. So like let's that assume that. for the sake of argument, we would not actually be doing that. That is the reason that we have taken Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm not. Uh, I mean, advertising their name in there. Yeah. That is the reason we have taken them in there to say that is that is an organization which actually looks after the food as it should be looked after. So, th therefore, if non-Muslims were to handle food without gloves, uh, would you certify? Would you certify? We we would ask them first to get the hygiene training. There's a meat hygiene training everywhere. That's why. So, would you ask them to wear gloves? Therefore, of course, okay. of course, of course. Because you see, they, there are places in that chicken shop they can wear gloves. There are places where they cannot. If they are doing the breading, as I mentioned to you, I mean they don't. Uh, they don't uh, uh, um, sort of. I have to wear gloves, but if they're serving you, I mean, the first... So if they the do the breading, they don't need to wear gloves, no. but they'll still get your seal of approval. Uh, that's right. But if, if they're serving in the front, because there, they have done all the, all the training for the hygiene in there, how to handle the... So how would, you, how would you deal with that problem then? Because there will be Muslims out there that will say, for the sake of argument, well, I, I don't really want non-Muslims touching my food, but you're, you're going to go ahead and certify them. By... by Muslims touching the, the food, even even the raw material, it does not in any form or manner make it non-halal. Simply because, as I mentioned to you, that the only way the Muslim, on the place the Muslim should be touching anything, should be staying, is the slaughtering station. Sure. Everywhere else, they have to follow the rules of hygiene and segregation and non-contamination. Sure. Just a quick disclaimer, of course, anything in this show that relates to jurisprudence, you need to check with your own scholar. Uh, Masood's views uh, are indeed his own views uh, and that of the HFA, but um, at the end of the day, we do need to sort of issue... Um, our views, that, our uh, views are from the standard of the HFA. Th that, 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 exactly, the standards uh, adopted by the HFA. And on that note, we're joined by the editor of the Muslim News, Ahmed Versi. Ahmed Versi, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Um, well, what, what's your view on this whole, uh, this whole uh, horse meat um, saga which started off? Um, it then transpired that uh, prison food, food contained a whole, um, pork DNA, rather, which we'll go into um, in a moment. Uh, what's your view on this? Well, um, um, I think, uh, as I think uh, what has been uh, being discussed uh, currently on the horse meat at least is uh, something to do with fraud. Uh, however, this uh, issue of uh, pork in, uh, in the halal food, uh, this is not the first time that this has happened in prison. Uh, this has taken place in the past where Muslims in prison were um, fed with uh, pork. And, uh, and I think uh, the whole issue, the way that uh, we are uh, uh, looking at the halal food generally and meat, uh, I think it's uh, in the wrong way, in the sense that we need to have a more stringent control on this uh, whole thing of halal products, because what is happening is that contamination can take place, which in this case has taken place at any stage uh, in the production sure. and in the uh, process. What would those controls be in your view? 
So the control is that the those people who are involved in halal uh, halal um, um, like for, uh, so organization like Halal Food Authority and others, I mean, they have to be more stringent and they have to be more actively involved in to ensure that this doesn't happen. I mean, they might uh, certify uh, an institution at one place and and then uh, say, okay, you know, you have to abide by such regulations. But if you do not uh, ensure that this does, does take place, I, I, in the sense that to, to send continuously inspectors to ensure that uh, this is uh, abided by by the uh, the respective institutions, then I think it's, it's going to continue uh, to uh, affect us in a negative way. You see, the, the one about the post media is different issue altogether. Sure. About this one is uh, different uh, as well. Sure. Ahmed Rosi, editor of the Muslim News, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, th th there we have it, Masoud Khaja. I mean, we know that the, the pork DNA that was found in prison food uh, was um, not the pork DNA, but the food that, that, that the food stuff was uh, verified and certified by the HFA and ended up having pork DNA in it. I mean, do you think right. you've failed, me failed in your duty let me, to. Let me clarify to first protect what, the what Emma said about uh, uh, prisons have been served pork before. They were not served pork before by Halal Food Authority or by anyone. They were served by, by the port, uh, by the uh, um, prison authorities. That's a different thing entirely. Sure. Right? Here what we are talking about is the pork DNA being found, allegedly, in, in, in pies. Let me explain to your viewers I mean, how things in, in pies in, in pies in pies yeah. that were let certified me, let me start without any kind of uh, 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 um, sort of qualm which I'm going to mention sure. the ingredients of the, of that particular pie were checked they were right they were correct the processing plant uh, the, the, was checked they were right and they were correct now the pies were made for a particular uh, prison and they were going to prison they were going uh, to through a distribution plant, the distribution premises, which were, which were called 3663. They were asked to by someone, which is, I'm told now, by Ministry of Justice, to check because that uh, uh, supplier of that beef at one time was actually involved in horse meat thing. Horse meat, by the way, does not affect Muslims at the moment, simply because Muslims don't eat non-halal meats. Now, because the check were done by 3663 on somebody's instruction, they found pork traces in there. Now, the question arises, who asked them to do it? Which lab did it? Were they really equipped to do the DNA of, uh, of, of pork in there? Because it's a very a com a complicated match. Sure. But where did that meat but, come from? Where did that pie come no, from? No, the, the pie came from, the meat came from a, a, a company. I'm not, I'm not going to name that company sure. because obviously people but they know deal, about Do they company. deal exclusively but, with Muslims or non-Muslims as well? Uh, pardon? Do they, th does that company deal only with Muslim, um, does that deal with only halal meat or non-halal meat as well? Non-halal meat as well. Right. Right. Non-halal, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 products as well. But when, when uh, what I'm talking about is this, ingredients were right for yes. that pie, the processing was right for that pie, but the checks were done at the uh, distribution plant. Sure. But just now, on the no, no, point. No, no. Okay. Yeah. If they had found that to be containing or having contaminated by DNA of pork, first thing first they should have done without actually uh, um, a sort of doing a press release, they should have gone to the processing plant and checked it again to verify because it's very easy to say that the DNA of pork was found in there. I had shaken hand just now with you, right? My, many of things from your hand must have been passed on to me as well. Okay. That is scientific. Sure. Okay, so exactly the same way anything could have happened. But to ver to verify that, and why is it the question does come up that we have not heard from the Food Standard Agency, which is the enforcing body? We have not heard from the Ministry of Justice. Or, uh, I mean, actually, Ministry of Justice is. Uh, uh, a representative of of, uh, of, of prison was on uh, with me on the radio, I think last Friday, and he said um, your standards are as good as ours. Sure. So let me put this question for you. Therefore, so are you suggesting that there is a possibility that this whole issue of pork DNA could have been cross contamination 
at the distribution plant, That's right. essentially. And, and what other Muslim organizations now are doing, without verifying the whole, whole thing, they're saying the Muslims are being fed pork meat. Pork meat is different, and DNA is different. We are not belittling the situation, but what we are saying is this, as far as pork is concerned, and I am the first one in Halal Food Authority who coined a phrase, for Muslim, pork is like nut allergy. We don't ask the people who have nut allergy, why do you have nut allergy? Nut allergy means everything has to be made sure. in, in in a, in a separate manner, without any contact. Let me let me put my next question to you, which is in, which, which which you know, it's an interesting point where you mentioned that the processing plant has um, halal meat and non-halal meat, uh -huh. right? Earlier on in the show, um, you 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 went to great length to talk about the fact that there is no cross contamination. Um, of meat when it comes to halal and non-halal meat. In fact, you, you went to great length to, um, to to make reference to the fact that it is non-halal meat. So is it halal meat that you certify non-halal meat? You don't. Are you not contradicting no, yourself? Now? No, we're not contradicting ourselves. This is, this is where the historically we have to go back. You see that prison as well must have looked at that plant before along with us. Yeah. We have looked at that plan before. We have given them a contract that when you do halal processing, you do this, 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 and that. No contamination is to be done. This is why the, uh, the leader article of Time said, and, and I said long before our name was even mentioned in there, in the Sky News as well, the responsibility lies with two sides. One is the authenticating body. They, they, they should look at the ingredient. They yes. should look at the processing. But the plant as well should be looking at the hygiene, the, the traceability, right. the, the HACCP. HACCP is hazard analysis at critical control sure. point. So let me ask you the and, question. And, and, uh, and labeling as well. Now the contamination which, which came in, we do not know that where it did come. Because the processing plant to the distribution plant must have been a space there. Who carried it? Were well, they individually packed? So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused here. So the slaughterhouse sends the meat to the processing plant, mm -hmm. and the processing plant sends the meat to the distributor, and the no, distributor... No, 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 no. Uh, well, the whole... The, the, the processing plant or the, or the uh, cutting plant would send the meat to the processor, so who, to, okay. who makes the pies. They made the pie. These were the cooked pies, which actually were ready to be eaten. They went to 366. So the processing plant, where does it get it's, its meat from? But the processing is, is not the question. The question is this, that those pies were edible pies. Right. Edible pies from the processor. A processing yes. plant went to the distributor and distributor. No, I'm, I'm not talking about the pork thing. What, what I want to know, I'm, I'm trying to get to this. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about pork. I'm not talking okay. about any but, other but, thing. On this because the question here at the moment is this: right. that I want to be exonerated from there. Sure. That the other other people, those who are making a, a kind of Islamic issue out of it, they're yeah. saying that halal food authority is feeding pork to Muslims. Right. Like like Emma said, is the second occasion because it's not the second occasion for halal in there yes. because it, there were the prison authorities which actually giving those those inmates something which was wrong. It has nothing to do with Halal Food Authority. Sure. As far as Halal Food Authority is concerned, my question still remains the same. Who has checked it back again with the with the processor? And by the way, we have delicensed that processor because we think that they were in breach of the European laws of traceability and labeling as well. Sure. And I suppose that's an interesting point because um, I just want to now go move on from pork to, to the issue of halal um, halal meat, if you like. Um, when you say that uh, you've you've now um, you've now sort of relinquished your ties with this processor, uh -huh. uh, many would argue, Masood Khwaja, that it's too little, too late. Um, do you think it's just sheer no, it's coincidence? Not. No, it's is, not. It, is it just sheer no, coincidence that HFA decided it's still, it's still to relinquish? When I appeared, it's still when I appeared with the with the with the with the Muslim advisor of the prison, he said your standards are as good as ours. Well, we have we have gone one stage further. Why we have gone one stage further? We find that if they have not been able to check with 3663 who were their distributor, then why did you actually do this check? And if you have found these checks to have contamination, because it's not ingredient issue, it's a contamination. But I said just now that I like your viewers to be very much uh, to understand, we are as distressed as anybody else. A Muslim would do anything else and everything in, in, in contravention of the Islamic rule. But I have never known 
any Muslim eating pork. I have never known any Muslim uh, uh, knowingly, intentionally, unintentionally giving other Muslim pork. So Halal Food Authority wouldn't do that at all. But now the situation is this, that the people are saying, all system of Halal Food Authority is wrong. I invite them. I would, I would invite them uh, to sit on a round table like this and see where we have gone wrong. We have not gone wrong because the very fact is this, this is a contamination issue. This is not the issue of Halal status of the problem. Well, we'll certainly try and arrange that round table discussion <laughs> exclusively, of course, on Ahlul Bayt TV and the big question. I, I've only got um, about 10 or so minutes remaining. I do want to touch on a couple of other issues uh, which are specifically related um, to the Halal Food Authority. Um, so, so when it comes to the issue of stunning, um, for example, um, um, Muslims and Jews have exemptions. They don't necessarily have to, they don't have to stun um, their meat prior to slaughter. Many individuals would applaud the fact that we have that exemption and many individuals would condemn the HFA for allowing stunned meat because you're just, sort of, well, one would argue you're sort of uh, causing havoc where havoc is not required to be caused. We don't need to stun meat, so why, 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 why make a big See, thing about stunning it? Whenever we talk about halal, I've known it in the last 19 years, there is one word which comes up all the time, everybody's lip. That is stunning. See, stunning is not the issue here. Issue is, is the animal being slaughtered according to the Islamic Sharia. If it was not, then Halal Food Authority meat, which, which Avidar approval goes to, places in the Middle East, places else, elsewhere, the processed food goes there. And as I mentioned to you earlier, there are organization in the countries like uh, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Holland, Brazil, Thailand, and and we conform to the, yes. uh, the laws which are actually two largest Muslim uh, uh, countries as well, which is Malaysia and Indonesia. So, so we're not doing anything wrong. Sure. As long as we conform to those three things I mentioned to you earlier, that the animal is not dead prior to slaughter, all the flowing blood has been drained out, and and a Muslim does the rendition of shahada. By the way, for Bahimatul Anam, four-legged animal, the slaughtering rule is written in the Quran and followed in Sunnah. But as for the birds are concerned, the slaughtering rules are not there. Who had actually uh, allowed Muslims, either Allah for authority or any other organization, to hang the chicken upside sure. down? Let, let me ask you this question in relation to the issue of stunning. When you said that when it comes to slaughter, the chicken has to be alive, or it should not be stunned in the sense that it's dead. So not stunned to disable, if you like, not necessarily stunned to kill. But we know that there may be poultry, there may be chicken, that, that when it's stunned, it dies. Uh, and therefore, it would not be halal. What checks do you have in place as the HFA? Well, as a matter of um, fact, it's a, very, that from happening? it's a very good question. Not only we have checks, and as I mentioned to you, the, the, uh, the uh, Arabic-speaking countries where halal food authority meat and poultry goes, their auditors come as well. They only were here about two weeks ago. If it was found to be, and, and we don't accompany them to slaughterhouse, they have independent audits. Right? So what we are saying is this, please don't make these kind of things issue simply because people say stunning is not allowed in Islam. How old is the electorate? Sure. But I mean, on the issue, on the issue of stunning... Well, let, me, well, let me finish the sentence, sure. please. How old is the chicken itself, which is called domestic fowl? Right? Who has allowed the chicken to be uh, hanging upside down? Who had, ch who had actually allowed chicken to be coming from yes. the intensive farming? I mean, I mean, as I mentioned to you earlier, these things would be in the past now sure. because the future is, sure. as, as I, read, uh, as I de delivered a speech in Middle East very recently, on cloning of animal and cloned me milk as, as such. And what is the effect of that on, on halal food sure. as such? So we've got to be moving forward. Yes. These things have been looked at before and these are all the time. Okay. Whenever I'm appearing on television yes. or, or radio, sure. the first thing you, 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 can, you can actually analyze the most word used is stunning. Well, it's just as well that I, I, I asked you, um, it wasn't the first thing, but rather the last thing. But moving on, on the issue of stunning, I, I don't want to discuss sort of whether stunning is permissible or not permissible, because we know that there is a, a difference of opinion concerning whether stunning is even permissible to disable. Um, but there tends to be a pretty clear understanding on all parts of the um, argument that stun to kill 
would render the meat haram and not halal. Would you agree with that? Alhamdulillah, you're quite right. Fine. Okay. That is the reason Fine. halal food authority... So back to my original question is, how do you ensure halal that, food that food chicken that is stunned is halal food dead prior to slaughter? Halal food authority standard is no stunning to kill. If, if the stunning at the time kills the animal, no stunning to be done. So that is controlled by, that is looked at by, not only the uh, uh, veterinary surgeon, but the Muslim slaughterman standing there. By the way, they have to be switching on the machine as well as, the, which is called a stunner, and they have to be lo uh, looking at it. If any chicken dies because of that, because what we have to understand is that all the, all the chicken are of the same weight. Otherwise, they won't be uh, 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 on the shackling there. Sure. Right. So, so they are the same weight. So, so what they do is this, that they, they take the current for the weight and they ensure that, that, the, that the chicken is, is, is not dead prior to slaughter. If the chicken dies, they will stop the machine and throw all that in there simply because that is to be done. As, as, as I mentioned, it's not only our audit, it's the audit of the other companies who are, you know, yes. other, other people are coming here, other delegations who are coming here. What we got to understand is this, in, in, in English dictionary, there is another uh, translation for stunning. Like people say, stunning blonde, yes. sort of nice thing as well, yes. right? So what, what we got to understand is that when we use these terminologies, we must be sure. Because the fact is this, that Halal Food Authority's uh, uh, progress has become envious for people. Fine. And they say the science and technology, the, the, uh, Sure. Well, I the thing which to be used. Let me let me just conclude. Um, we've got about five minutes remaining, and there is a very important issue that I now want to ask you about, which is that relating to accountability, transparency, uniformity, and and unity. Um, Masoud Khwaja, you know, during this show, you did mention that you're the first uh, president of the Halal Food Authority. It's been going for 19 years, and you're still in. You're still sort of. Uh, in power, so I mean, many, the, the, the argument that may be present, presented is that you're, you're wanting a bit of a hegemony, if you like. Um, how would you respond to that? Number one, how, how is the Halal Food Authority accountable to the people? And number two, um, why don't you all just come together? I am accountable to people on behalf of Halal Food Authority, like I'm sitting here discussing things with you. We're open and transparent. Our door is open to anyone who wants to come in. But my, my uh, uh, way of saying is this, I'm beseeching to people, before you announcing the demise of Halal Food Authority, sure. the work of Halal Food Authority, check with us first. People have said many times, I did not say anything on, on that, because I do not want to kick people when they are down. Sure. Right? There have been um, um, organization, Muslim organizations who have not conformed to the local laws as well in, in financial businesses and things like that. Ours is open. Why it is open is that is not Halal Food Authority, does not belong to me or the trustees. I am a humble servant there. Sure. It, is, it belongs to you, Mr. Ali. It belongs to people there. That's why people ask the question. I have never ever talked about other organizations at all. Never ever on behalf. And I've said to my staff as well, even if they ring you, talk about yourself. What we do, what our standards are. Our standards are open. Our standards are there. We don't claim it to be that what is being done is just according to Sunnah. No, the according to Sunnah, it cannot be at the moment. Why it can't be? Because Quranic injunctions of law have been taken in there, and we are doing it. I'm sitting under this light here. I'm actually being recorded by, uh, um, I mean, a media of telephone and and uh, and. Um, uh, and camera here. This is not. This is not one of the things in sure. there. I mean, all all these production which are being done are being done by non-Muslim. We have got eleven thousand restaurants here, or more than that. Ninety percent of them have got alcohol. Which Alim has said so far that that. Please don't uh, donate to my mosque if you're owner there. Don't go to Hajj and Umrah there. Masood Khawaja has said that. That's why people actually take Masood Khawaja on. It is not me. I'm not fighting with anybody. As a matter of fact, at my age, I should be actually retiring. <laughs> Sure. Right? But the reason I am doing all that yes. is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us that ajar to say that what we have done here is something for the future Very generation. Briefly, you've got a minute to go. What about coming together? There are, there, there are many different halal food certification bodies. Why can't you come under one umbrella? You see, this is very good question and I would say to you one thing. And I mentioned just now to you, we're sitting on a round table. 
I've always said, do come to us. See, the irony of that is one or two people who do criticize us as well, twice they gave application to work for Halal Food Authority. Sure. Right? And now they're, they're criticizing us. So we take criticism. Because if we are doing anything wrong, tell us. Hold us by the ear. Simply because, stop us doing that. But don't be aversive. Don't be um, in a manner trying to uh, uh, do the spreading rumor. I mean, somebody actually uh, 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 sent an email to a, a bread company we do. He says, don't actually listen to anything, don't do anything with them, simply because their, their slaughtering rule is uh, are not right. Excuse me, I totally forgot. It was a sliced bread, wasn't it? Yeah. We have to cut the bread. Well, but but that, that doesn't mean anything. Here, I would like everybody to understand this. We are as distressed because of this pork, sure. and we want to go to the bottom of it. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Masood Khwaja, thank you very much uh, indeed for joining us. You've been watching The Big Question live on Ahlul Bayt TV. As ever, you can share your feedback concerning the show. You can email us, tbq at ahlulbayt.tv. We shall be back at the same time next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.